Ladies and gentlemen, are you sitting comfortably? Then we'll begin. James Well, the voice of reason on the James Well Radio Show. Ah, well, welcome to the program. Here we go. It is the James Well Radio Show. Hello, hello, how are you all? It's so lovely to see you here. Oh, what a lot of rock. Some people on the radio talk all the time. Well, here we are. This is uh, the James Well Radio Show, an hour of fun-packed uh, views and information, all of which come completely out of my head, guided by a Robbo, our producer of this extravagant program, uh, who... Oh, wake up. Yeah, yeah, Oi. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Good. Wake up, for goodness sake. Got a show to do. Okay. Let's get it together. Okay, what are we talking about first? I have no idea. I have, it's one of those days. Um, let's just say hello to all the listeners. Hello, listeners. Uh, welcome, wherever you are, whichever uh, radio station you're picking us up on, your favourite radio station. Uh, if you're uh, listening to us via the radio, you may be online. Uh, you could be listening to us via our friends at talentgb.com. You could be picking us up anywhere, anywhere at all. And um, I should say, right at the beginning, if you would like to have this radio program on your radio station, uh, all you have to do is email me at jameswhaleradio at gmail.com. That's all you've got to do, isn't it? That is. That's all you've got to do. Yeah, that is. We've got some music coming up a little bit later on. Um, and we've got, a, oh, we've got a competition. We've got the most fantastic prize uh, to give away. It isn't, by the way, a copy of my book. I know. I know that makes you upset and sad, but it isn't a copy of my book. Uh, but what it is, uh, we'll tell you about a little later. In fact, there's a video. Isn't there a video of it, me using it or a picture of me using it somewhere? We'll show you uh, later on if you wish to go to the website, which is, of course, jameswellradio.co.uk. Mm-hmm. In fact, some of you may well be listening there at the moment. What was that? Mm, I was business? just agreeing with you. Was it you? Yeah, no, it was me. don't. Um, now, listen... Uh, <coughs> Uh, I want to say hi to all those of you listening in Wales. Uh, Yakida. I'm listening to you in Wales. Good, good. Well, welcome. Welcome welcome all Welsh people. Um, and this is especially uh, for, for those people who sometimes get upset about some of my Welsh views. But being, you know, when it, when it suits me, I'm a Welshman. When it suits me, I'm an Englishman. My mother was Welsh. My father was English. I feel I can speak on both sides. But this is a big up to the Welsh Assembly. Uh, they're going to say no to e-cigarettes in public buildings. Have you ever considered vaping, Robbo? Have you ever thought about it? Venting occasionally, but not vaping. No, vaping, vaping. You know, vaping is, uh, you, you get these pretend cigarettes. Well, you can, you can get, you don't have to have cigarettes now. You can get shishi pipes. You know the sort of hubbly-bubbly pipes that um, they smoke in the Middle East? Yeah, they've got a few in the pubs around here. Yeah, you can get e-versions of those now. Well, not e-versions. You know what I'm talking about. The um, well, they call e-ver- e-cigarettes, aren't they? Why mm. are they called e-cigarettes? I have no idea. No, I haven't. Anyway, um, so you can get e-versions of that. But there are two things. First of all, um, uh, I think you look pretty stupid using them. And and secondly, it could be it, it, it seems to be encouraging kids to get hold of them as well. You know, you go they they're pretty funky. In fact, I was looking at one the other day. It looked like. Doctor Who's sonic screwdriver. So, anyway, the Welsh Assembly are going to say no to having them in uh, public places. And I think that's a good idea. You may differ. You may differ. And if uh, if you do differ, just, uh, well, get in touch. You know how to get in touch. Get in touch with the programme. And, uh, and let me know. Uh, Facebook me. Tweet me. Um, and tell me your thoughts on an e-cigarette. You see, the reason I don't want to see them in pubs... Because you go into a pub now... And it's much nicer atmosphere. In my view, you may disagree, in my view, much nicer now than it used to be when you went in. You went into the pub, (laughs) and you couldn't breathe. You came out, your clothes stunk of smoke. If you had a meal in the restaurant where it was no smoking, you could still smell the smoke. Because let's face it, you can't stop the smoke going from the smoking area in to the no smoking area. So I and now that's stopped. I don't think we should have people with pretend cigarettes in there sitting there like prats 
with these uh, these things pretending they're very cool smoking them because i don't think you are i really don't think you are um william street actually uh, got in touch and he said when we find out that it's harmful, then that will be the time to review the situation. Not just in Wales, but nationwide. William, um, I I don't know that we have to wait that long. We waited a long time before we found out that nicotine cigarettes were harmful. I'm not trying to ban them altogether. I don't mind people doing it. I don't mind you doing anything, in fact. Being the liberal libertarian. Why did I go into a Jamaican accent? Huh? Try it again. I'm not. No, no. Oh, hang on. Oh, I've got something stuck on my tooth. Ooh, how disgusting. It was a bit of chorizo sausage I ate probably a couple of weeks ago. Um, right. Uh, I don't mind you doing it. You could do it anywhere, but not in public. I think I think that the government have missed a trick here because I think they should have smoking dens. Dens sound cool. Yeah, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Little places where if you want to smoke, whatever you want to smoke, you go and smoke it away from everybody else. I'll tell you, another thing, I think they should stop people smoking ordinary cigarettes on the street outside where they work. Yeah. Because that doesn't look nice, does it? No, it is a bad image for the company, isn't it? Yeah. It's encouraging, you know, drug taking, basically, because people who smoke uh, are addicted because you wouldn't do it if you weren't, would you? It's always by the door as well. You always get sort of that waft yes. of it as you're going in the doorway. You go into a building and they're all standing outside and they all shake. I don't know if it's because they're getting the fix of their favourite whatever or because they're cold because they have to be outside. Anyway, it's just a thought. So you could have places, you could charge quite a lot to have a licence to have a smoking den. I think that's a good idea. You bring back the smoking jacket. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lynn Snowden, hello, Lynn, said uh, they have helped so many people that I know actually give up smoking. So I'm for allowing them in public places. But why? You know, why, why, why allow people to, you know, who obviously haven't been able to kick the habit because they have to have an e-cigarette? Craig McKenzie says he thinks the Welsh Assembly are right to do it. But Andy Sworn has to go off on one. Uh, I beg your pardon? I didn't say anything. I thought you were going to say something. Because oh. I said Andy Sworn. I wasn't accusing Andy of swearing. That's his name. I see. Hi, Andy. Uh, where's the evidence for the passive harm... For these or real cigarettes. Oh, come on, Andy, please. Let's not go over that again. Well, first of all, there's no evidence uh, for passive smoking of e-cigarettes. There's no evidence of anything for e-cigarettes. The reason they should be uh, banned in public is because people look stupid using them. Um, As far as real cigarettes, Andy, uh, I don't think you need any more proof than there is already. Uh, Never should have been banned smoking in the first place. They could have made revenue by allowing smoking licenses available. to You see, Andy, you agree with me, mate? Yeah. And allow us adults to choose whether to go in a smoking pub or a non-smoking pub. Spoken as someone who gave up smoking seven years ago, banning everything is not the answer. Do you know, I'm warming to you, Andy. You're, you, you, you know, you're, you're, you're right, to be honest. Uh, Although there are people who have children who smoke around their children, and I think that is appalling, but there we are. Uh, Paul Gard... Gardener, Gardenia, Gar- sorry, Paul, anyway, he says, I vape. Paul, is that something you really want me to tell the world? Because remember here, on the James Well radio show, if this broadcasts across the universe. Are you sure? Okay. He says, I vape, and I can understand where they're coming from. A lot of pubs have now banned it because it causes arguments with smokers saying they can't. Uh... If uh, if I smoke, if people are vaping, I used to smoke 40 cigarettes a day. So totally agree. It's a good way of stopping and try everything possible previously, but got to say vaping works for me. I haven't smoked since October. Well, I'm happy about that, Paul. But, you know, you're still addicted to having that thing between your fingers. Can't you find anything else to hold? Well, maybe we shouldn't go there. Um, and uh, finally... Uh, well, no, we'll leave, leave a couple of these. We better move on a little bit. Uh, thank you very much indeed. So your thoughts on Wales are, are talking about banning vaping in public places. Vaping is not smoking. It's vaping. It's uh, inhaling and puffing out vapour that looks like smoking. So what you're doing is pretending to smoke. Do we really want to see people doing that? I think places where you can go and do it. Little clubs where you can go and vape together. 
would be a good idea. But if you want to uh, uh, let me have your thoughts, tweet me at the James Whale. Tweet me on Facebook um, or get in touch some other way. People are so inventive about how they get in touch. Uh, you're listening to the James Whale Radio Show online and on your favourite radio station, wherever that may be. Uh, and uh, we've got time, I think, for an advert in here. What do you think, Rob? Yeah, let's put an advert in. Adverts are good. You like adverts? I love adverts. Well, that's why we're here. That keeps the uh, programme going. And, of course, uh, your favourite radio station probably puts some adverts in here as well. Now, if you want a copy, a free copy of my audio book, because let's face it, who wouldn't? Uh, and I have uh, I've spent so much time recording it, as I always say, then all you've got to do is go to the website, jameswhaleradio.co.uk, and click on the Audible link. You see it on the top there. Click on the Audible link. And by registering with Audible, and I think if you are registered with Amazon, you don't even need to go through all the business of, of uh, registering, do you? That's right, yep. Uh, so da- then you can download any book you want, but of course you'll probably want uh, almost a celebrity. Download it, and uh, you get it for nothing. What? Last week you said uh, the book was called I'm a Celebrity, but uh, I'm sure people... Did I? Yeah, you did. Did I really? <laughs> Yeah, you didn't think to correct me, did you? Well, I thought you, there was something you were subliminally telling us that you were going to be uh, doing a show. No, 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 shh, 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 no, no. Okay. Can you really see me in the jungle, you know, standing there in a very sexy little white bikini under a waterfall? Can you really see that? No, no, no. Okay. I'm not doing it. Uh, so anyway, jameswellradio.co.uk, go to the website, click on the audible link. I need to shift a few more of these. I've recorded millions. And uh, if you register with Audible, then you can choose any book. You don't have to have mine, but um, you can have mine if you wish. Uh, Almost a Celebrity is the book, and you'll get it for nothing. And then, you know, you can can have it with you wherever you are. Now, we did a competition last week, didn't we? We did. Tell me about that. What did we do? We did a competition for the Spider Vac from spidercatcher.com, spider-catcher.com. Do I need to ask what that was? What what was? Hmm? Okay. (laughs) Ah, that's better. I just felt like a little gargle in the middle of the programme. Are you advertising mouthwash or something? (laughs) No, but if you would like us to advertise mouthwash on the programme, just get in touch. That's all you've got to do. Oh, dear. Hang on. Just a minute. Hold on. Don't go away. Hold on. Hello? Hello? Hey, Jerry. Do you want to be on the programme in about ten minutes? On 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 uh, radio stations throughout the universe. I'm doing it now. How would you like to be a guest? Oh, that's good. I'll ring you in about five minutes and it'll take about, I don't know, however long you're entertaining and then we'll get rid of you. I'll call you in a bit. All right, mate. Bye. Bye. Oh, well, that's fascinating. There we are. Uh, Jerry Hayes, as I live and breathe. I wonder if you can edit that in somewhere. I'll put it in, but people might get a bit annoyed with the old uh, clickety clicks of the uh, mobile phone. But if they can put up with that, I'll leave it in. Uh, So I tell you what I think we should do now is the competition, because we did one last week, as you quite rightly said. And who won it? Uh, Sharon Hutchinson. Yeah, hello, Sharon. Congratulations. Now, what you win, as Robbo quite rightly said, is the big buster spider and insect vac from our friends at spidercatcher.com. Check them out. And it's very easy the competition. If you would like to win one of these spider vacs, and briefly, just so you know what it is, it's a very, it's a little tube with a suction motor, which is battery powered on it, and it'll suck up spiders and other bugs you find in the house, and you can then harmlessly put them outside. So you don't have to squash them and tread on them and all that sort of stuff, do you? I had a big wasp in the studio a few minutes ago. And did you suck it up with a spider vac? No, it was downstairs. I opened the window and let it out. Mm, okay. Well, sometimes you can't do that, so the spider catcher will do it for you. It doesn't work on slugs. They get stuck in it. <laughs> Have you tried? 
Yeah, I found a big slug in the kitchen. It must come off some of Mrs. W's uh, stuff. Right. Anyway, um, so all you've got to do to win this is share the link. Tell them how you do it. Facebook.com forward slash James World Radio and share any of the links we put out. Yeah, and what we'll do is we'll pick somebody who shared the link and we will send you one of these fantastic spider catchers absolutely free. Now, um, let's get a bit of music on the program because I think we have found the next big thing, all right? And I don't say that lightly, do I? You don't say anything lightly. I don't. Now, our friends at TalentGB.com are now providing us with the music for the show. Uh, So uh, TalentGB are providing the music for the program. And uh, if you would like to get on the program, then uh, all you've got to do is get in touch with TalentGB.com. If you want to see, hear, or hire any of these artists that we feature, again, Get in touch with talentgb.com. Now, this bit of music is from a young lady called Rebecca Kirk. Now, I think this is amazing. And I think, just have a little listen to this, and I will tell you about Rebecca after you've listened. This is her version of Alanis Morissette's uh, Uninvited.
so there we are, the fantastic Rebecca Kirk and her version of Alanis Morissette's uh, Uninvited. Now, when I tell you that she is only 13, uh, I think she's going to be a big star in the future. If you want to find out more about uh, Rebecca, then go to talentgb.com, check out uh, her there. There's a video there you can watch and check out some of the other great musicians and artists with talentgb.com. And if you would like to get on the program, then all you have to do, as I said before, is get in touch uh, with talentgb.com. And I think we should get an interview with Rebecca Kirk because I think she is going to be a real big star in the future. Now, uh, a little later, we're going to talk on the program to Jerry Hayes. Jerry uh, used to be a regular guest on one of my TV shows back in the 90s. He was, he was also a member of Parliament, the Conservative Member of Parliament for uh, Harlow and Hayes, I think it was. We'll find out when we talk to him uh, a little later on in the program. He rose to fame uh, by going to the Conservative Party conference, getting up on stage... And uh, then forgetting, he, he thought he'd go and make a speech. I can't remember what it was about. Uh, but he got up on stage to make the speech. He hadn't got his notes with him, and he forgot it all. And he just blustered his way through. And uh, it was probably the most embarrassing thing you have ever seen. But it, it made him into a bit of a celebrity. And then we put him on the television show for about three years. Um, and Jerry has just written a book all about this, and we'll find out more a little later on. Uh, but talking about politics, it's been fun, hasn't it? I mean... Earlier in the week, I asked if Maria Miller is showing politicians in a good light and uh, should she stay or should she go? I was inundated by your thoughts. And uh, guess what? After she knew I was talking about it, what did she do? Robbo, what did she do? She first uh, went to the toilet and then she quit. Yeah, that's exactly it. She's gone. Uh, Mark Powell says, uh, when will MPs finally realise that people have had enough of this. These people should be made an example of. She should go. Uh, Conrad Boole says, to elaborate, if I was to fiddle my expenses as a sales manager in the way she has fabricated hers, I would be sacked on gross misconduct without my feet touching the metaphorical floor, or even the real one for that, Conrad. Uh, Also, if it was to the amount in question... Uh, then the boys in blue would become involved and I would probably expect a custodial sentence. Are these politicians too stupid to acknowledge this? Uh, Just a couple of your thoughts uh, there and we will have a a few more when we talk to Mr Hayes a little bit later. Um, You're listening to the James Whale Radio Show online and on your favourite radio station. I want to talk a bit about nakedness, if I may, for a moment. How do you feel about it, Rob? Well, I'm a bit of a naturalist at home. That is a really disgusting thought. <laughs> I, really? I, I like to wander around the house, you know, with no clothes on. That's appalling. Well, um, in South End on Sea, particularly a uh, nice part of the world, I don't know whether you've ever been to South End on Sea, they have a lovely long pier. It's very genteel. Um, and in one of their theme parks on the front there, they have now decided to make it uh, a prerequisite that if you go to the theme park and you're a man, you must be wearing a shirt or a T-shirt. You can't go topless. You know what happens in the summer? Guys seem to feel it is perfectly acceptable to wander around bare-chested. But I, I, do, I don't like it. Do you? Never really noticed. You lying little... Of course you've noticed. You know, guys guys wander around. You've probably noticed too much when I think about it. Guys wander around without their shirts on into the supermarket. You could be sitting having a cup of coffee uh, or a beer and there's a bloke sitting next to you with it all hanging out. Quite often, quite often, the people who have it hanging out the most are the people who shouldn't. And, and listen, some women as well, when it gets hot, They throw decorum to the wind. They squeeze themselves in to some of the most inappropriate clothes. And they think it's all right. It isn't. It isn't. It's horrible. Please. And so I did throw this out a little earlier on uh, on Facebook. And um, 
Uh, Shaz, hello Shaz, says, as someone who believes in freedom of expression, I think good on them for not caring about what others think. Shaz, you can't mean that. Not if you've seen some of the sites I've seen. And quite frankly, some people's personal hygiene is not as good as it should be. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Leah Harlow says it's disgusting. R- Richard K says it's bloody awful. Greg Howell says, why are you thinking of visiting your local Lidl later, James? Oh, I see. Are people in Lidl going around bare-chested? Well, I think they want to put a stop to that as well. M- and men wearing shorts in the summer. Some Some men just don't have legs that should be allowed out. It's horrible. It's horrible. Uh, uh, Mark Dewhurst, what is your, what are you, what's your problem? My problem? I don't know. I think it makes you feel good about yourself, seeing all these other people walking around with bits hanging out everywhere. You think, well, at least I don't look as bad as that. I think it's disgusting, and quite frankly, you should cover it up. Samantha Doyle <laughs> says, Brad Pitt, yes... Johnny Vegas, no. And it's interesting, the Johnny Vegas lookalikes are more likely to go around without a shirt on, without a care in the world. The same way that some of these guys who've got huge beer bellies actually wear tight-fitting T-shirts. Have you noticed that? Yes. Have they no shame? Johnny Vegas is looking quite trim these days, though, to be fair. Yeah, I think, actually, it's probably unfair to to pick on Johnny. He's a good guy. Uh, Brad Pitt... Um, not, listen, I would agree. If you're a good-looking bloke or a good-looking woman, it's 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 it it's less off-putting. It's your duty to walk around. Well, no, it's <laughs> no, no. But you know how some people say, "Oh, look, they've only got their job because of the way they look." Well, fine. If there are jobs where we have to look at people, is it not better? to look at somebody who is attractive rather than to have to look at somebody who isn't. And don't any of you pretend you don't agree because you want to look at nice views. You don't want to look at ugly views. I wouldn't strip off and impose myself on you. I mean, I happen to be a a fairly good-looking bloke. I happen to be quite photogenic. I happen to be easy on the eye. But if I look like Rob... (laughs) I wouldn't seek the limelight, would I? I don't go out in a day. No, it's sad, but he doesn't because he knows it makes people feel, well, slightly ill when they see him. Do you know what I do to wind people up? I go to Waitrose. Oh, you are disgusting. You are disgusting. Dan uh, Heatley says it's disgraceful and shameless for men to take their tops off and very bad etiquette. Samantha Doyle, as I said, says yes to Brad Pitt, no to Johnny Vegas. Uh, Cordelia Cordy Cullen, is that a made-up name, Um, says, if I did it, I get arrested. Oh, if I did it, I get arrested. So why are they any different men? See, yeah, she's right. If a woman was to walk around topless, she would soon be taken in by the bobbies, wouldn't she? I said bobbies. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and Paul Red uh, says, gross, put a shirt on. No one wants to see your sweaty moobs when doing their <laughs> weekly shop in a supermarket. Not the bleeding Algarve. He's right. People go abroad and they inflict their their horrible sort of, uh, I don't know, um, uh, what what's the, what, sort of pale pastel flesh on everybody else. Do you know, I, don't know, I think we should get a serious conversation going. Should we get hold of Jerry Hayes? <coughs> Hello? Jerry Hayes! Hello, uh, James Whale. Well, is that better now? Is this a better line? Well, do you know, that was uh, we tried to get Jerry on the programme earlier, and it was a r- really rubbish line. And then I thought, no, it's not. It's just his rather weak voice. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Come on. Uh, well, question listen, now, we're well, on the program question. now, so we're doing we're doing the show. So, are you in entertaining mode? Yeah, vaguely, absolutely. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> it's been a lot. Listen, we used to do a television show together back in the uh, in the nineties, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was and and very pop. I still get recognised from it. We not there for oh many years, seventeen years. Yeah, Probably something like that. that. And yeah. uh, we um, we used to get Jerry in to do... Jerry got me into more trouble with Ofcom than anyone else I've ever known. Wow. <laughs> However, um, not all that long... Well, probably about 
about three years ago, I was waiting at a bus stop to get to Liverpool Street, and this bus suddenly comes along, and a fellow has the usual say, yeah, James, whoa, come on in, Jerry, where you going, mate? I said, I'm going to Liverpool Street. I thought, that's a bit odd, you know, it's a bus, he's, you know, and it's got number 11 on it. Anyway, <laughs> as we're driving along, I noticed that was, um, there were no other people on board. The lights were off, and there was a strong smell of alcohol. And it's only when we arrived at Liverpool Street, and he fell out of his chair, this is the driver, I realised he'd nicked the bus. <laughs> oh, you see, you got me into a bit of trouble then. <laughs> How on earth, listen, let's go back to the beginning, Jerry. You yep. you were an, an MP. In fact, you were a junior minister for a while, uh, Well, you? I was a, a part of what they call now bag carriers. I was parliamentary private secretary, uh, Northern Ireland. A great time to be in Northern Ireland because the peace process was just beginning. And then the Department of Environment, which was desperately dull. Uh, but, you know, it was, it was an interesting time. And if you read the book, the book, an unexpected MP, <laughs> which is available at all good bookshops and on Amazon or Kindle, um, you'll see all the stories there. Well, fact, all right, let's, we'll talk about the book you. in a minute, which, and we'll tell our listeners how they can get hold of it as yeah. well. Um, but let's talk about your, your rise to fame as a politician, because it all came about when you went to make a speech and you forgot it. Oh, well, brr. Yes. Um, in fact, I was being tipped to be a health minister, and this is just before the 92 um, general election, so it's an important one. The chief whip brings me up and says, Jerry, come on, we want you to make a barnstorming speech. So the night before, I was with um, all my mates, journey mates, in the bar, and they sorted out the most fantastic speech for me. Unfortunately, we'd had rather a lot to drink. So when we went to bed about four o'clock in the morning, I was up bright-eyed and fairly bushy-eyed. Started off really quite well, being terribly arrogant, didn't have any notes. And what happens was I can suddenly see, um, what do you call it, uh, alcoholic amnesia waving before my eyes. And I just, com I made a complete pig's ear of it. It was really extraordinary. Excruciating! It makes me nauseous to think about it now. But, <laughs> but there you go. Yeah. Did you after that? Did you did you consider that that um, politics would not be your lifelong career? Well, I mean, anyone in a marginal seat and anyone with a, an ounce of common sense shouldn't make politics their lifelong career. And any, anyway, they should do something useful and interesting first. And I did it purely by accident. I joined the Conservative Party purely for sex. Uh, and then I got interested in politics, and <laughs> it's all in the book. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I became an MP. So it was all by accident. You know, the people that really do worry me are these horrible little kids of about 15, 16, who desperately want to be an MP at an early age. Uh, and they tend to be rather dangerous, really. But there you go. Why are they dangerous? Because... If at the age of 15 and 16, where you really should be having as much fun as you possibly can, all you're interested in is politics and wanting to be a politician, I just think that's a bit, hmm, a bit strange, a bit weird. Do you think people who go into politics now forget that they're actually going in to service? They're going <laughs> there to be... Absolutely, and that's really half the point I was making, because a lot of people haven't done a proper job at all. Uh, they've, they've gone in, uh, and uh, they've, they've been a, a special advisor to a minister or to a trade union. Uh, they've come straight out of university into a think tank, and they know nothing about real life and the sort of people that they're representing. And, you know, your job as an MP, to be perfectly frank, is looking after the interests of your constituents, all their problems. It's not solving foreign policy or sorting out the, the, the budget crisis. That's for the Chancellor and his team. What you're there to do is sort people's problems out. And a lot of people lose, lose sight of that. Would you go back into politics or not, Jerry? No. I mean, if someone offered me a house, seat in the House of Lords, of course I'd bite my arm off for it. But that's not going to happen. Um, yeah, a lot of people have asked me if I want to stand again. But look, I should be 61 in um, in. Two, well, no, a month's time, no, two weeks' time. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just really can't be bothered. I'm having much more fun writing books, appearing on your show, and uh, being at the bar. Margaret Thatcher loved you, didn't she? She did. She did. Oh, we scared, stared adoringly into each other's eyes. No, we didn't get on at all. And it's probably because I was brought up in the days of Macmillan and Heath, and I was very much of the, you know, the hardly patrician, but the... the um, one nation side of the Conservative Party, which she regarded as wet because we wanted to help pensioners and spend more money on the health service and things like that. So, you know, we just didn't get on. We used to have rows and, well, you know, because I stood up to her. And I mean, 
don't take away from what she achieved. She achieved an awful lot in the first three years, and then it all got a bit out of hand, and they all, they all go mad in the end. They all go mad. I, I don't know why you never became a Labour MP, because a lot of your views are fairly left-wing, aren't they? Well, not really. I mean, I think they're fairly right-wing on the economy, um, fairly sort of rightish wing on law and order, with the exception of death penalty, they're not in favour of that. But I wouldn't feel comfortable um, with, 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 with Labour, because, all right, they've got their mad extremists, as, as the Conservative Party has as well, but I don't think I'd be particularly comfortable there. I'm more comfortable with my mates in the Tory party. People like David Cameron, who I think is a really nice guy, and we keep in touch, uh, and, you know, doing the best in a very, very difficult job. So I would find it very difficult. With Tony Blair, yeah, because Tony, in fact, asked me if I'd join New Labour, and I said, mate, I'd love to, but you're too right-wing for me. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard you do that one before. Yeah. I've got to tell everybody a little, a little uh, story about... Uh, I, we did, uh, with the programme, we did a, a live version of the programme yeah. uh, around uh, some Butlins holiday camps. And we were in North oh, Wales God. on one when you were with us. Do you remember? Oh, I was on two. I was on two. And cowsers who were drunk, 3,000 of them, and they started throwing toilet rolls at us. And Charlie Chuck was on. I uh, ha- mention- hang on, hang on, hang yeah. on. They were throwing them at you, <laughs> not at and us. you, well, they were primarily for you, but you shoved me onto the stage. I said, what do I do? Said, Tell a few jokes. Well, that deck went down well, didn't it? Uh, <laughs> just, just, I, I, just a minute. Yes, yeah, you're right. Let's, let's talk about afterwards, right? Oh, right afterwards, okay. when we went out looking for something to eat. Ah, of course we did. Here we are. And we brought, I think we still had a... Um, <laughs> Makeup on because we've done a, a, a hasty retreat uh, uh, from uh, from from Butlins. It's dreadful, uh, and we we were in Wales, so we found uh, the what in the some Welsh Conservative club. And I was still a member of the Parliament. They would be delighted to see me. So I banged on the door, went in. He said, "Are you a member?" I said, "Yes, I am." No, you remember this club then with your friends, all your friends here, you know, all your theatrical types. Uh, I said, um, "Well, yeah, I'm a member of Parliament." Oh, you're not a member here now. Bogger off. <laughs> and that was it. And we went off unwelcome back to London, didn't we? In the middle of the night, I remember, no. not only could we not get anything to eat because they didn't like you, <laughs> but there, you, there were no 24-hour fuel stations in Wales, so we had to knock up a policeman who had to go and knock up a garage to get some fuel to get back. No, I'd forgotten about that. I had forgot. It was one of those completely disastrous days because I shared a, a dressing room with, with a bunch of strippers. Uh, and, of course, the news of the world got wind of that, and which didn't go, well, it was quite funny, really, when you, when you look back on it. But then we had that little incident where people were throwing things at us. And then we had that little incident where we couldn't get into the Conservative Club. And then I'd forgotten we'd run out of petrol. <laughs> and, oh, and the garage was closed, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. We had to get the bloke... Uh... We had to get Jones the fuel out of his bed, open up the garage, and uh, and off we went. My gosh, that's a long, where long did, time where ago. Where did we end up? I can't remember, because we're going back to London, but I can't remember where I stayed. Well, we, you didn't stay with me, if that no, makes any... No, I didn't uh, stay with you, but I mean, I'm just wondering whether we, they put us up in hotels. I just don't remember. No, we went to Air no, as we well. Didn't, was, we didn't, we right. didn't make like enough money to stay in hotels. What? I said we didn't make enough money to stay in hotels. No, we didn't. Well, actually, it wasn't too bad for those days, really. But, I mean, everyone me. on the Whale Show, tell I mean, God, the yeah, money we tell- got on the Whale Show, well, you obviously got more than me because it was your show, but I got 50 quid a whack. That wasn't more than me. Yes, it was. <laughs> no, you got more than <laughs> me. Well, you did. It your show. But tell me about the money. book, Jerry, before, before you go off on another tangent, yeah. and uh, goodness only knows where we end up. What, tell me about this book. What made you write the book now? Ah, it was just, I was, I was being delayed by British Airways, and I was in an airport queue for 29 hours, uh, and <laughs> you get to know people rather well. And there was this lovely young couple, um, Chris and Cathy Dennett, who invited, I invited to my launch, actually, last week. And, uh, you know, they said, oh, because I've been you know, boring with themselves, well, I need to write a book. So I got in touch with a mate of mine. I said, so I want to write a book. What do you reckon? He said, send me two chapters to sign me up. Uh, and I thought, well, now, where do I write it? I, I like to write in company, but if I go into a pub, they'll recognise me because of your show. Uh, and I've still got this distinctive bit and curly hair. So I thought, where can I best do it? And I was doing a long case in Leicester. So I thought, if I go to a lesbian bar, I'll be fine. So I wrote it in a lesbian bar in Leicester in a couple of months.
Do you know, I, I am amazed that you are still walking around grinning and smiling and laughing after all these years of some of the things, some of the things you've done and said. Oh, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> I mean, who would go into a lesbian bar and write a book? Me. Because I'd yes. just be left alone, wouldn't I? No one would talk to a bloke in a lesbian bar. One more story about you which has just occurred to me. What was that? One day, we used to do all sorts of very strange things, and, you, uh, and some, of, uh, some of the old TV shows we're, we're showing on uh, jameswellradio.co.uk. Really? Okay, some people, yeah. Oh, I have to look at that. One of the shows uh, uh, that I haven't put up there yet, but if I can find it, I will, um, we did in a place called Madam Jojo's. Madam Jojo's. I remember going there, but I don't remember. And we took well, maybe maybe it was some of the girls from Madam Jojo's who came on the program. But one ah, night, that's what it was. That's what uh, it was. you yes. you and me, and Mrs W as well, I think, oh, yes. and a few yes, other people there. went to Madam Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit of an experience, wasn't it? And for those who don't know, Madam Jojo is, is, was different then, whereas now it's lots of very attractive women, as you think, but they're not. They're, they're actually, you know, blokes. And they do I the didn't act. think for one moment they were women. The only person who got <laughs> confused, Cherry, was you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, in fact, there was a really nice guy uh, who did the show with us. He said, look, I've never been to the House of Commons. I said, I'll take you, mate, you know. So I look around, you know, the, the central lobby, and I was a PPS at uh, this time, and I'd been there quite a bit. A what? Well, no, a Polish private secretary, an aide, a bank carrier. Uh, and so I looked around for this bloke, and there's no bloke there, but there was this drag queen in full bloody kid who had to take to lunch in the House of Commons members, whatever it is. You yeah. took um, what, well, the, the, these were, and I don't know if this club yeah. still exists, but the, these were the most amazing, you're right, most amazing looking women who yeah. were actually blokes, and they did yeah. a cabaret. Uh, it, it, and it was, uh, it was a, a very sort of singing and dancing cabaret. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, you had no idea, and I told you, oh, they're very nice girls, and you said, well, I, I'd like to meet these, come and have a chat to them, and I introduce you, and you were convinced Absolutely. they were women. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, but they're very, very nice, very talented people. I don't know what's happened to them all now. I suppose you do have shows like that. But very often, you know, I mean, having experience in a lesbian bar, um, a lot of them, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, drag queens tend to be sort of old and rather fat. Um, you know, they don't look like women at all. They look as if they've just you know, walked out of panto. Careful. Oh, yeah, those actually looked, you know, like, 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 like proper ladies. But there you go. Now, listen, tell us, what the, tell us what the book is called. It's called An Unexpected MP. You can get it obviously from Amazon or you know, any decent bookshop, but Amazon's is cheaper. You can get it on Kindle. And mm -hmm. it actually this is quite surprising. It is the number one bestseller in Central and Southern America. God knows why. And no. God knows who's buying them, but it, it is. And actually it's doing quite well in America. Uh, and it's doing very well in Hong Kong. Well, Jerry, so we I, I can only recommend people, if they want to laugh, to go out and get it just before you go. Uh, one of the stories we were talking about on the programme yeah. um, is uh, men wearing no shirts in summer. South End, at the, uh, one of the leisure parks on the front of South End, are banning men from going topless in the summer. Your thoughts? Well, firstly... I don't object, obviously, to people being topless on the beach because that's where it is. No, that's uh, fine. But walking along the streets, I don't find it particularly ple pleasant, unpleasant, uh, you know, if they're enormous beast people. But, I mean, you know, you, they may be offending people, but they're not sort of mugging you. I just think it's rather a politically correct, ghastly thing to do, actually. And let them do it. What, what do the good burgers of South End say about it? Well, everybody I've canvassed, whether it's in South End or, uh, or, or um, uh, I was going to say on the moon, but there yeah. are very few topless men walking around on the moon. Yeah. Uh, most people seem to think, yeah, quite right. Cover it up because it's always the, 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 the larger, more, more, un more unattractive people who seem to do it as well. Or muffin topped girls who are wobbling along. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't ban it. I just think it's good manners not to do it. 
Jerry, good to talk. Thank you nice very much indeed. Well. And uh, we must we must take a trip to North Wales again fairly soon. Oh, no, we won't. <laughs> nor to air, nor attempt stand-up comedy ever, <laughs> ever again. See you later, Jerry. Cheers, mate. Bye. Uh, well, my thanks to Jerry Hayes, who uh, is uh, is always uh, a good turn. And uh, don't forget, you can uh, get his book. I'm sure if you Google it or look on Amazon, you will be able to get hold of Jerry Hayes' book, uh, of which he says there is a chapter devoted entirely to me. I'm not sure if I'm happy about that or not. Um, anyway, as we like to bring you uh, news stories, don't we, on the program, Rob? We do. I think you'll be finding this one quite interesting. I know Rob will. Um, the Financial Times has informed its readers of how cutting-edge science is being brought to bear on a different species, cows, and specifically the huge amount of methane they produce. It says the Obama administration's plan to curb methane emissions has given fresh relevance to scientists' attempts to reduce the amount of gas the animals produce. <laughs> The paper speaks to an expert from the Illinois-based Cow of the Future program who explains some of the technologies being considered. They apparently include anti-methane pills, burp scanners, and gas backpacks that will collect the methane from the cow. So I, I don't know about you, but I think that news story has been greatly overlooked since it came out. And where are we going with this again? What, cows? Yeah. Well, cows uh, uh, produce a lot of methane. Farting. I.e., to make it more easily understandable, Rob, for people like you, cows fart a lot. There are a lot of cows in the world. They fart a lot. And the methane that they produce is damaging the environment. Simple. Simple. So I would like to say to the dear listeners this week, have you got any suggestions as to how we can stop the car... The <coughs> do it again. How we can stop the cow farting. Because I think, you know, people poo-poo this idea, but I think it's quite serious. I think we need to be more aware of the cow's emissions. I've got an idea. I think probably more important than car emissions. What, dear boy? I've got an idea. If, we, if we get all the cows to date each other... Right, they won't fart on a first date, and we just keep alternating all the cows. So get one cow to go out with a date with one cow, and then switch them round every day. Do you know that just shows why I am the talent and you are back room? Say that again. I said that just goes to show that sort of comment why I am the talent and you're in the back room. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I misheard the first time. I thought you said something. Now about shut the back up. Room. Sorry. Farting cows. I think it's a it's a news story that was it's being very seriously taken by the Americans and the Obama administration are putting quite a lot of money into that. Can't they get fart pants? I saw some of those on the gadget show the other night. What? You put you know Mr. Methane? I do. He used to appear on my shows regularly. Well they he tested out some fart pants. They've got um carbon crystals in the in the pant lining so when you fart it absorbs all the uh, oh no just that might just absorb the smell the gas might still mm. actually come out uh, it's uh, don't worry too much about the smell it's the gas that is the problem yeah okay all right time for another advert and uh this time uh it is of course the advert for the ordinary copy of my book almost a celebrity signed by me by my fair hand this hand here that hand, sign the books. Uh, just go to jameswellradio.co.uk uh, and forward slash shop. And also, uh, you will see we've got some T-shirts and some baseball caps just right for covering up your bare chest. And if you're like me, for your bare head as well. Um, so check out our new shop uh, here on the website, uh, just go to the James, well, just go to jameswellradio.co.uk forward slash shop and get your hands on one of my books that I signed. Apart from that, t-shirts, baseball caps. We should sell some of those um, uh, spider vacuum thingies we're giving away, shouldn't we? Uh, we haven't got many. Well, we'd have, we'd haven't have, we? No, we'd, we'd have to do a deal with them. 
Well, that's the sort of thing we should be doing, a deal, I think. Uh, anyway, you're listening to the James Whale Radio Show online and on your favourite radio station. Uh, I think time for another piece of music. What have we got this time? Well, we got this is good. Uh, these are the jars coming up. Uh, and our friends, of course, at talentgb.com are now providing us with the music for the show. And if you want to see, hear or hire any of these artists or have your track played on the show, go to talentgb.com and uh, then they will sort that out. And uh, we could be featuring you on the program in the near future. Uh, the jars. This is a song called I Feel Good. the jars and uh, a song that's called i feel good check out uh, them on talentgb.com don't forget if you'd like to hire them or see more of them uh, or hear more of them then talentgb.com is the place to go those are the jars after listening to that i tell you rob i feel good too that's nice to know
And uh, don't forget, as I said before, to check out our new shop at jameswellradio.co.uk. Uh, that's it for this week. Thanks to Jerry Hayes. Thanks to Rob. What are we thanking you for? I do all the work. You do all the work. Um, <laughs> uh, if you want to get in touch with the programme, then uh, all you've got to do is uh, Facebook us at uh, facebook.com forward slash jameswellradio. Or you can email me at rob jameswellradio at gmail.com. Okay, so from uh, the James Whale Radio Show here on your favourite radio station online on practically everything, thanks very much indeed. See you next time. You're listening to the James Whale Radio Show. For more information, visit www.jameswhaleradio.co.uk. Why not check us out on facebook.com slash Show or follow James on Twitter at the James Whale. James Whale, the voice of reason.